welcome back everybody. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking uh, uh, a little bit about the GT, the X22 GT here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move some fairings. I want to show you guys some hoses. Uh, I want to show you how the coolant system works, but I also want to show how the evap system works, uh, how the, all the vacuum lines kind of flow together and uh, what they're for. Um, so we're going to need uh, just a couple tools because I'm going to remove a couple fairings. I'm probably going to pull the, the seat off so we can get a look underneath there and uh, we'll go from there. You don't need any sort of crazy tools. Uh, just an Allen key set and a Phillips screwdriver for what I'm going to be doing. Um, and that's about it. So I'm just going to grab that stuff. And let's get started here. So we come down here. Let's take a trip down. Now these bolts here are usually number five. So there's one there and one there. So you just can see. Okay. So this is usually a, a number five. So I have actually a number five. In the little hand driver, and it makes it a lot nicer because I actually take off a lot of these number fives all day long. So, I should have got a bolt tray, but of course, I didn't. Now, this panel here or this fairing is just pull it, now put your fingers underneath, quick tug towards you, and it'll pop off in your hands. Just set it down and off to the side. Um, always set your fairings down on the back. Don't set them down on the front because then you'll just scratch up the front of your fairing. And we may move another fairing, remove another fairing. We may remove this one here, uh, like right here. Uh, I'm not too sure yet. I want to see how much we can see just removing these ones. The more I can explain, the better. I'm also probably going to remove the seat and not because I need it off, but just because when it's, once it's off, I can see a lot better underneath here. So I'm just going to go to the other side and we'll take off the fairing on that side. I mean, it's a real quick process. It's nothing too difficult. Again, this fairing, fingers underneath, give it a pull towards you. This one down here has got the Phillips screw. There we go. Yeah, I'll probably remove this one. It won't give us a whole lot of access, but it does show us a little bit more when it comes to the, the, the lines. So like if you come down here, so these lines here are just uh, the breather lines. They just come off um, the, you know, the emissions. So these are like vacuum lines, basically. Uh, one comes up to the overpressure line on your engine right here. So this right here, right where my finger is here. Let's see if I can drop you down. You can see where I'm going I'm gonna show it on the other side too. But that's the overpressure line on top of your engine. Uh, so you don't want to kink that hose. So that returns back to the air box. Um, <clears throat> the same as this line down here. It's another line that goes down to the engine for air. It's just an air line. There's no oil that runs through this. It's just air. It's an air vacuum line. Uh, that's the one that goes off the top of the engine um, and then flows to this T right here and then flows to the front. And then it goes down to the crank right here too. But again, it's just a blow off pressure. It's nothing uh, uh, too crazy. This right here, that goes up to the air box in the front. This is for your emissions line. And it comes all, also off the emission system, which is right here. And it comes up and around. Uh, we're gonna go to the other side because there are a lot of vacuum lines on the other side that I'll explain. And I'll show you where the coolant lines are and different things. 
This here is actually an oil line on this. So this oil line is all steel. Uh, it comes up here, joins into this line here, and then goes up straight to the top of the engine. Uh, and it also goes down to the back of the crank right there, back by my fingers. Uh, so that's an oil cooling line. Um, and that's what that's for. So this is obviously your uh, water pump right here. And that blows the coolant up to the, or pulls the coolant from the rad. This right here is, uh, goes to the rad as well. It goes all the way up and it goes all the way into the engine right here, right there. And that's just, a, um, it's kind of like a thermostat, but not really. A thermostat in a car would blow heat where this thing doesn't have to blow heat. All it does is a temperature sensor. Uh, and then you have this line here that comes off of that, a temperature sensor, and that runs to the carburetor. And it tells the carburetor if it's, uh, if it's hot enough uh, to turn the choke off. So we'll go around to the other side. And we'll look at the vacuum lines for right here. So right here, these are just pump lines for the carb. These are just a vacuum. So this is for a vacuum pump line. This is for a vacuum pump line here. Uh, if you take it off the carb and look on the side there, it's just flat. Um, and it just kind of shows uh, what vacuum is on for everything. So you have nothing to worry about there, uh, but you can see how it's all connected. And, and like I said, it's just for vacuum and pumping fuel. Um, so that's how that works. Now, this bike doesn't need any sort of a fuel pump on it because the vacuum pump on the top of the carb. Uh, if you were to change this carb, all you would do is remove this off the carb and keep it. You can keep it right on the bike. I've done it before. I've put a nibby carb on this bike before. It makes it friggin' amazing, by the way. But, um, yeah, that's you just take this part off the carb and, and you keep it on the bike. Uh, so that's how that works. Now up here, you're going to see a couple hoses here. And I know a lot of people don't, they say, well, these hoses are hanging. They're supposed to actually be hanging. One's the vent off for your tank. So one vents your tank off so that it doesn't create a back pressure up inside here when you're riding. Um, and the other one is for your air box. <clears throat> so if any liquid collects in your air box, it li it'll literally come out of your air box and just drain out. Uh, and that's what that's for. Now you have another one over here too, right where my hand is back here. Again, that's just another air box line. It flows around down to where the um, the charcoal canister is. The charcoal canister is right where my hand is right here. And uh, that's part of the emission system too. So basically what they're trying to do is, is change the majority of your exhaust into a vapor um, and stop harmful uh, things that go into the environment. So it turns it more into a, uh, a vaporish type thing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed on a car, if you leave a car running or idling for a little while, you'll notice little driplets of water that are coming up the back of the, of the muffler. It's the same type of idea. Um, just the catalytic converter is what does it in a car and it tries to vaporize most of, of what it can of the exhaust. It's, it's just part of the environmental control um, some states, uh, you don't need to have in Canada, every province, we need to have uh, emissions. So, um, it all depends on your state, but, uh, keeping the emissions on is very easy. It, it's easy to maintain. If we step back here now, this is just a breather line for your CVT. So just so air doesn't build up pressure inside here from riding and heat. It, it's able to vent off and it vents off back to your air box. Anytime that you have a vent line like this, most times it doesn't even need to be really connected to anything, but it's always safer to be up to the air box rather than suck in water or something when it's raining or something like that and then get a bunch of water down into your rear end. So anytime you see a, a vent line like that, most of them will always return to the air box. So that's pretty well explains all of those lines. Uh, I can show you, the, I'll show you the fuel line on the other side, how it connects up to the, the gas tank. Um, so if we go in through, say the back end here, and you look straight up there, well, I'm gonna go from the other side. Cause I'm gonna try to put my arm in there. Because straight up inside there, 
You got a fuel pepcock right where my hand is. I'm gonna see if I can. Right where my finger is, there, right there. That's the fuel pepcock right there. So that's how you turn your fuel off. You'll notice this one's turned sideways, so the fuel's off. If I push it all the way down like that, that's fuel on. If I put it all the way up to the top, um, once I put it to the top, that is, oops, sorry, um, is fuel reserve. So if you, I'm, I didn't put it at the top, I just turned it off again, but if you put it all, sorry, if you put it all the way to the top, right there, that makes it uh, be on reserve. So you're gonna catch all the, the gas at the bottom of your tank and you can use that. Now, right here, going into the carburetor, connected to a fuel filter, that's your fuel line, and it goes straight to that pepcock, so that, that little switch I was just showing you, and that's what that's for, and then it goes right into the carb right here as a fuel line, uh, and that's pretty well it. You have one other line right here, like I said, that's for the coolant, and that tells the carb, uh, I was showing you that already, that's the same line. You have one other line that everybody kind of gets confused about, and they panic because it breaks off. That's this line right here, now what this does is actually the, the um, drain for the carburetor. So if you lose this screw right here, it's just gonna pour gas out of there because all the gas from your carburetor is gonna come right out where the screw is. Now if that happens when you're riding, there's a quick fix, uh, or if this breaks off when you're riding, or if anything happens where this here is leaking gas, just take this off and tie this hose in a knot. Give it a good hard pull and tie it tight and you'll be able to get home. It'll stop the gas coming out of your carb until you can get home. Uh, but that's pretty well it. That's uh, the whole, pretty well the whole situation down here. Now, I'm gonna show you up here a little bit farther on how the rad works up in the front. Uh, you don't wanna take off all your fairings because you really don't need to. But we can see right here, this line right here, that's our overflow line. So if the rad has too much in it, what it will do is it will flow uh, back down to the tank right here. So this is your uh, um, reserve tank right here. So if you have too much of your rad, it'll blow down to the reserve. If it doesn't have enough in the rad, it'll pull from the reserve. This re bike is sitting, it's got a little bit in the reserve, but it could probably use a little bit more. Um, but that's what that is for. And your rad, like I showed you already, where the big hoses come from, this hose here, comes from the rad and this hose here comes from the rad um, so if we look up here this one here comes from the top of the rad so this one here from the engine goes to the top of the rad runs all the way through the rad to cool well this one pulls all that um, nice cool water from the top or from the bottom because it's went through the rad obviously and it's went through the fans it pulls the cool water, um, coolant through and then back up and it's just a it's it's just a revolving revolving uh, unit that's all so that pretty well explains all the emissions lines all the vacuum lines if you have any questions uh, for a video anything like that definitely reach out but uh, that explains everything uh, for lines on the x22 GT250 uh, this is a really nice bike to ride <clears throat> It's a little bit more complicated than some of them because of the vacuum lines and things that are on it. But a bike's a bike, so they all run pretty well the same. Again, that's our video. If you have any more questions or concerns or you need anything, definitely reach out.